Hello and welcome to our online worship from Fort William, Kilmally and Kilmanevig. It's very good to have you with us on this first Sunday of 2021. I hope you had a peaceful Christmas and that you will enjoy a very good and happy and peaceful new year as well. Today we're going to be reflecting on the fact that praising God, giving thanks to God is something not just for when times are good, but when times are challenging. And we're going to be reading some words from Jeremiah that pointed that out to us. But we're going to start off our worship just now by hearing some words from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He keeps your gates strong. He blesses your people. He keeps your borders safe and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He gives a command to the earth and what he says is quickly done. He spreads snow like a blanket and scatters frost like dust. He sends hail like gravel. No one can endure the cold he sends. Then he gives a command and the ice melts. He sends the wind and the water flows. He gives his message to his people, his instructions and laws to Israel. Praise the Lord. We're going to hear a reading today that comes from Jeremiah chapter 31 beginning at verse 7. The Lord says, Sing with joy for Israel, the greatest of the nations. Sing your song of praise. The Lord has saved his people. He has rescued all who are left. I will bring them from the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. The blind and lame will come with them, pregnant women and those about to give birth. They will come back a great nation. My people will return weeping, praying as I lead them back. I will guide them to streams of water on a smooth road where they will not stumble. I am like a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my eldest son. The Lord says, Nations, listen to me, and proclaim my words in the far-off shores. I scattered my people, but I will gather them, and guard them as a shepherd guards his flock. I have set Israel's people free and have saved them from a mighty nation. They will come and sing for joy on Mount Zion and be delighted with my gifts, gifts of corn and wine and olive oil, gifts of sheep and cattle. They will be like a well-watered garden. They will have everything they need. Then the girls will dance and be happy and men young and old will rejoice. I will comfort them and turn their mourning into joy their sorrow into gladness. I will fill the priests with the richest food and satisfy all the needs of my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. Some words from John's Gospel, chapter 1. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all mankind. The Word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. John spoke about him. He cried out, This is the one I was talking about when I said, He comes after me. But he is greater than I am, because he existed before I was born. Amen. May God add his blessing to the readings from his word. Today we've been reading a really extraordinary passage from the prophet Jeremiah. It's extraordinary because he is telling people to sing for joy, to celebrate God's goodness. And that might not seem unusual. There's plenty of parts of the Bible that do that. Psalm after Psalm tells people to celebrate God's goodness or to sing for joy. But the thing about Jeremiah's message is he shares it at a time when things could hardly be worse. Because the people he's writing to have been taken away from their homeland and brought into exile. They're far from home. They don't know when they're getting home. And yet, what Jeremiah says to them is that they should be giving thanks to God. Why would he say that? What would lie behind that kind of suggestion? 
Well, it's simply this. Jeremiah is saying, things are tough, but they're getting better. Things are bad, but they're changing. Things are difficult, but God is acting. God is going to bring them back from north and south, from east and west, bring them back to their own homeland. He's going to restore them to the place that they had been before and create a new community, a new society with his people. That's what there is to celebrate. But they're not there yet. It's still due to happen. And yet the time that Jeremiah tells them to start thanking God is now before all those things have taken place. Similarly, in the first part of John's Gospel, we're told that the light was coming into the world and that Jesus was that light. And in all of his teaching and all of his message, there's a here but not yet aspect. The kingdom of God is breaking through, but you haven't seen it in its fullness just yet. And those two messages of the fact that it's tough but it's getting better, it's dark but it's getting brighter, seem perfect for this, the first Sunday of the year. In January, of course, the days are short, but it's getting brighter and the days are getting longer. In the challenges that we have all faced over the last year through the effects of coronavirus, things are tough. There's a new variant out there which is making life hard hospitals are struggling there's a long way to go and yet now that we have at least two approved vaccines things are getting better things have been hard and they're not fixed yet but god is bringing about change and that seems to me the message of jeremiah the message of, of the first chapter of john which is for us today and the time for us to celebrate God's goodness, to give thanks to him for what he's doing, is not after it's all finished, but now. While we still have challenges to face, while we still have problems to overcome. And I hope that you'll find at the beginning of this year, whatever challenges you're facing, you'll be able to look at them and say, yes, but things are changing. Yes, but God is making a difference and to trust that that gives you perfectly good reason to give thanks to him sing if you like that's what jeremiah says uh, we might not be able to do that together but we can do it on our own and we can sing in our hearts for joy at the beginning of a new year because we know god is at work we know things are improving we know that the positive is in front of us Now we're going to come to God in prayer. Let's pray together. Gracious and everlasting God, as year succeeds year, you are always the same. You're always good, you're always gracious, you're always merciful, you're always reliable. And for that we offer you our thanks and our praise. There is no other God like you. And we're glad that you journey with us through the years. Lord, at this particular time, we look back and look forward. We look back in a year past that was full of its challenges and problems and obstacles to overcome. And we're grateful to you for being with us through it, for helping us and for sharing with us along the way. And as we look at the year ahead, we still look at problems and challenges to face as the new variant of COVID-19 has its impact and seems to be more contagious than ever as our services face pressures and our essential workers are under challenge and so we're still going to need your help we're still going to need your strength we're still going to need your blessing and we pray for that but we also want to thank you that as new vaccines begin to be rolled out that we will see that process of change beginning that we will see changes to the way we have to restrict our lives and we thank you for that and for all the people who are involved in that. 
Lord, we pray for the people who are the decision makers in our country and who have to chart the way forward as changes take place in our relationship with our friends and neighbours in the rest of Europe. We ask for wisdom and guidance for all those who are part of the decision making which will be there in the time ahead. Help them to make good and wise and gracious choices. Lord, we want to pray too for the people we know who are going through hard times at present, for those we know who are feeling a sense of isolation. We pray that you will give a renewed feeling of hope because you are with us. You are a God who brings change. For those who have been through periods of loss, we seek your comfort and your strength. And for those who are having to face up to problems of health or problems of being separated from family and friends at this time, we pray that your presence will be always near. Lord, as we look ahead, we pray that you'll be with our congregation in Fort William Kilmally and Kilmanevig. Help us in the various challenges we have to face, especially as our buildings are closed again for the meantime. Help us to keep the worship of God going through these online services and our paper worship and all the ways in which we seek to continue to serve you. Uh, give us the reminder that you're always with us. Give us the assurance that you're in the process of bringing change and making things better. So Father God, we thank you for all of your goodness and your kindness to us. And we sum up our prayers by using together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for sharing in our online worship today. The main piece of church news to share with you is that unfortunately under current circumstances we're not able to open our buildings for our regular Sunday worship and we're sorry about that but with numbers limited to a maximum of 20 we feel we'd have to turn too many people away and also we feel for the safety of everybody in our congregation at a time when stronger restrictions are in place. We can't open at present, but we'll keep you in touch and we'll tell you as soon as we can and we'll keep going with our other forms of worship in the meantime. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Uh, after the service ends, you'll see some pictures of, that were mostly taken on Christmas Eve. And the pictures which speak to me of the fact that it may have been dark, but it's getting brighter. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>